Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Today I'm excited because we're going to play not only the War of the Chosen but the legendary new Legacy Hub. Um, so it's the Legacy Expansion of XCOM 2. Let me just turn on the music a little bit. Um, I'm going to run through the Leg uh, Le Legacy Hub with a blind run only focusing on uh, beating it at the hardest difficulty. I haven't read anything about the content other than what's generally inside. I have not spoiled anything, so this is going to be me approaching the game completely fresh. Uh, this is uh, recorded as of um, October 9th, uh, probably uh, when it uh, will be uploaded to my channel. It's more likely, more likely going to be November 9th. I wanted to show you the Foreman Iron, uh, the Foreman Legendary um, Iron Man Ballistic Only um, uh, Permanent Dark Events campaign uh, first, like the OMFG run that needed to be finished first. So we're now uh, able to fully focus on the Legacy um, expansion. For those of you who have not heard about it, basically, the Legacy um, expansion focuses on running through the intermediate uh, time between XCOM 1 and XCOM 2, kind of the fall of XCOM, so to speak. Um, and we can run through that by using this brand new legacy operations mode. From what I do understand is there is no strategic layer of any kind. It's basically just select your soldiers and give it a go. Um, the more successful operations we have, and the higher the score, the more we can unlock. There are going to be weapons that we can unlock. These weapons will then, to my understanding, also transfer in the main campaign. How exactly that is going to work, I don't know yet, but we're going to see all about uh, all of that. We're starting with the legacy operations. I am not looking into the skirmish mode yet or into the challenge archives. Let's jump into, I think, what most people would uh, start with, uh, the legacy operations. Here we go. Game automatically moves into the four legacy um, uh, operations. There is Central Archives, so that's John uh, Bradford. And um, apparently... There are resistance archives. Generate new resistance operation is something that we cannot select yet. The first mission blast from the past. Having survived the alien assault on H uh, XCOM HQ, the broken down central officer Bradford has been living in the fringes since uh, that harrowing day. Now a year later, Central has fallen in with a few hardy souls doing what he can do to survive the spreading alien occupation. Spurred on by the thought of uh, finding the remains of the beloved, his beloved XCOM, Central set off with his new friends, following a map of unknown origin. We apparently only have uh, the option to select the soldiers here. And I don't like this, the fact that we need to play on story difficulty. Saiken is not playing on story difficulty. Saiken is playing on fucking insane nightmare difficulty. Okay, wait a second. We need to maybe configure something. It can't be right that we're playing on... So first of all, we're using the good old UFO defense. I love that soundtrack. For those of you who have never uh, played UFO, uh, UFO defense, it was one of the very, very first games when I was really young that I played. I immediately fell in love with it. I can highly recommend it. Maybe even if en enough of you are asking for it, we're going to give it a shot and I'm going to play it. It's just a bomb. Uh, it's just the bomb. The game is really, really good. I played it for hours at a time. You wouldn't be able to tell, right? Okay. So how can I um, uh, put a harder mission in? That's a bit disappointing.
I mean, all of that is fine. Wow, wow, the music is is wonderful. I already love that. I'm sorry. I'm I'm just I'm just in, uh, enjoying myself incredibly. Um, so apparently, these four operate. Um, uh, these four. These four soldiers are the only ones that we can get. So I don't know why we need to play on story difficulty because that is not what I would uh, want. Um, so yes, a scatter gun and the traditional sword, frag grenade. It's kind of the starting loadout um, of XCOM 1 soldiers. Secondary weapon, a handgun, a grenade. Um, we do have the, the good old heavy light machine gun, the grenade launcher, back in the days, then uh, two grenades, that's okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure in the next one, one we didn't have the gremlin, um, but the medkit, yeah, fair enough. An old world assault rifle, I like it. Uh, these guys have pretty high aim, specifically Bradford here. Gosh, that's going to be easy. So what else can I modify? Start operations. Oh, there we go. No, we're not... Um, why exactly? Based on Central's uh, recollection, things were never easy nor too hard. Oh, okay. So we earn either, either have a story, which is the cl classic, uh, probably normal mode. And this here is then the equivalent uh, of, of uh, I don't know, probably commander mode. Enable legacy narratives and Iron Man. Yeah, of course, we're playing Iron Man. What else? This option will reduce the voiceover of Central during the gameplay. Um, yeah, we're, we're going in, guys. We're going in. All right, people. Story time. This was almost 20 years ago, so my memory might be a little hazy. With XCOM gone and no sign of any survivors from HQ, I had somehow fallen in with a couple of other misfits the aliens hadn't managed to kill yet. We mostly kept our heads down and scavenged what we could. Until one day we found a map. A map claiming to point towards a human sanctuary. A gathering place for those of us still out there. We were suspicious, of course, but we didn't really have much else to lose. Five minutes in either direction and we would have never met. But for whatever reason, my little group seemed to get along pretty well. We weren't much more than wandering vagabonds at that point, but the map gave us a purpose. Something to work towards. That meant moving through occupied territory, though. So this was sure to be a test of our resolve. Ooh, okay. I like it. So, this here is pretty similar to the challenge mode, apparently, because um, you can earn uh, points just based on, on your behavior. But shortly look through it, the higher your point score, the better uh, you've done, apparently. Um, completing uh, the whole objective is probably 10,000 enemy kills. I assume we're fighting against 12 enemies. That's the standard loadout that uh, you had in a normal XCOM mission. Wounding penalty minus 1,000, dying minus 5,000. Pretty straightforward, I would say. So let's see uh, whom we have. We do have a sniper. We do have... Um, never seen Bao, by the way. So we have Central. We have a sniper called Bao Zhang. We... I don't like that these guys uh, are not customizable. That needs to change after the next mission. We have a heavy and sparrow. I like it. Neutralize all hostile targets. That's pretty much about it. Okay. I'm on the move. Bradford is taking the lead. Oh, got you. It's not as simple as it might look like. Well, here we go. It already smells like a couple of injuries to me. I 
I don't want to go upstairs. Uh, I do have the distinct feeling that we're just running into the next pack of aliens. Instead, what's the range on this grenade uh, launcher uh, long enough? We're starting with a Viper and then we're going to uh, hopefully get down one of the faceless ones. Faceless one is too far away from the uh, car, so we can't kill it. Our main, um, or we can't kill the car. Our main task will be to get rid of the tree here altogether and free up enough line of sight um, to the Viper. There we go. Viper is freed up. Here's one very important lesson to learn. Uh, when you fight against melee units, it doesn't matter if you're standing in the open or not. So might as well use Bao here to kill the Viper. Might as well miss her. We're going to give a protocol to Central. So he does have this extra defense, which is going to even help him in melee. And we're continuing to fight against the Viper. Yet another miss. We're unlucky today. So then my backup plan was to let him stand here. The reason uh, I usually wanted to move him back, uh, which would have been the safer choice to not get wounded. Now we need to deal with at least one attack from, uh, from the faceless one. Um, and we need to shoot the Viper. Of course, it dodges. That's really the worst possible start. It's going to bind us. Nope, even worse, we're going to be poisoned. We're off for, uh, for a wonderful start. I love it already. We're definitely not going to be able to reach the perfect score now. By the way, a little bit of a learning for those of you who would um, get all amped up for not hitting something. It simply happens. So minus thousand for a wounded soldier. Again, it happens. Um, little tip here. Again, move out of uh, the uh, out of the poison before curing it. We're immediately going to. Oh. Well. I guess the gremlins uh, during this time period weren't advanced enough to already cure, um, to already cure from a distance. So, we're saving our second grenade. But I think it's a great opportunity for... Uh, it would have been a great opportunity for a sniper if she could just throw a little bit f further. Mm. Uh, Bradford can move pretty far, so here. I would want him to move as far as possible. Um, we're going to use the grenade, mainly because it deals 9 points of damage at least, um, and it's going to kill the Viper for sure. Alright. Let's stick with ki uh, with killing one of these guys. Yeah, it's not our day today. I can already see that. Naturally, they regenerate some HP and most likely are going to hit Redford. 
This is, by the way, why I haven't uh, put him next to the car. The claws deal AoE damage, and you never want to sit them next to the car. Redford took a substantial amount of damage, so we're losing another thousand points here, which is unfortunate. I don't remember all the details, especially how I made it out of the base back then. I woke up in a smoking pile of rubble and crawled as far as I could. Beyond that, there was a lot of dark, bitter days in between. So we're eight for calling uh, Bradford. Continuing to shoot the chosen one. Not the chosen one, the faceless one, rather. Reload to maximize our action economy. And there we go, finally, it's down. So, theoretically, uh, the, the faceless one would have enough movement to reach both of them. We couldn't prevent that from happening. So, what I'm going to do instead is, I'm going to photo both tank him. And since we do have 8 protocol, it doesn't matter if he's a bit injured or more injured. Getting a little too close here. That's fine. We had hoped we could scavenge a few supplies. Maybe find something to eat at the diner. Unfortunately, the aliens didn't give us a whole lot of time to look around. Yeah, that was a... I would say that was a solid uh, first pack that we killed. Reloaded. I'm ready. Voy hacia ese lugar. Moving in and mainly reloading. Still got another grenade left over. It's strange to think what it was like back then before Advent became the front. There were plenty of aliens, but a lot less barking. Stranger still is how quickly people forgot what the real faces of the war looked like. That here, by the way, what should have been my first move. In XCOM 1, you couldn't climb up these ladders. So... That's definitely a good idea to to take the high ground. Let's do this. Order's confirmed. On the move. Overwatch. Come get some. All right, Overwatch. Let's see where are the enemies at. In the early days, the faceless weren't even disguised half the time. And there were all kinds of silly ass rumors about shape shifting animals, vehicles, all kinds there of There we go. That made trust even harder to come by among strangers. Moving on target location. All right, let's move in. And let's make sure that we can kill the faceless ones. Andando. Trying to not stand too close to one another, so if they would hit us, um, we wouldn't be hit by uh, we wouldn't be hit for, by multiple targets. Come on, maximum damage. We go, baby. That's a very solid shot. Let's take it. Well, probably not solid enough. The other alternative would have been moving up and throwing a grenade over so it takes damage and falling damage at the same time. 
problem with that is uh, these fields here are uncovered so f uh, not discovered so far so we could have triggered another pot that was the reason why I decided not to do it just to explain my movement there Sector just positioned himself uh, next to an explosive material and mind controlled us. Alright, so the sector is the next target that needs to die. That's no question. Well, the way we're uh, going to do that is. I'm on the move. We are going to explode this here. This should deal 3 damage and then 6 damage for the additional explosion. There we go. Very good action economy. We used only one person to kill the other uh, sector. So we now have enough people left over to actually kill the faceless one. It's killing time. Reloading to optimize our action economy. And now it's time to uh, fully kill this. Uh, this face this one. Central takes the eight protocol again. Because in case of a doubt he's going to tank uh, tank this beast. I deliberately chose a spot where I am not going to tri pull a, uh, trigger another pack. All right, Dreadfords moving up. It's the full overview. That's good. I love it. It's being accompanied. Everyone's slowly but surely following him. Time to reload, really. Adelante. Everyone needs to reload. Good to go. Got it covered. The enemies certainly aren't moving, so I might as well the help them. Interesting. So, if we were to use a grenade, just out of curiosity, we could probably get both of these guys. So we're leaving high ground. This here is dangerous because we could, could be uh, spit it at. This here is removing all of the cover and hitting the Viper. The Viper is the, the main target. Both are out of cover. Sentry gets the protocol. Because he's, he only has four hit points left. Solid damage to the Viper, and let's kill it. There we go. Can't reach the sector, at least not completely, but we could, could crit and we could max damage crit, which could kill it. Well, we crit, but it wasn't maximum damage, so it's down to 1 HP. 
it's going to use mind spin. Yeah, that's his normal routine. Well, that's fine. I don't mind. Before we rush in, I'd like to try to kill it without rushing in. That's the first try. That's the second try. Oh, we do have a stop. I remember, we could run hard the same kill. The reason why I didn't want to rush in, I really did not want to... Um, the first day went well, to pull another pack. We well, that was easy. I mean, we sucked at the beginning. Let's not let's not sugarcoat it, right? Uh, we lost 2,000 um, uh, 2, potential score because two of our soldiers got um, unfortunately injured. But I think 12,000 overall is a respectable score. All right. I like the perception idea. Ranger will get Mimic Beacon. Grenadier will replace uh, 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 grenade with uh, frag grenade with proximity mine. Proximity mine is a shit item. It's really, it really stinks. Sharp Shooter will gain Battle Scanner. That's not bad. And. School Jack is also fine, but here's the deal, like, uh, we can get a lot of equipment over time. I'm definitely into the PCSs. Conditioning means more hit points, perception definitely means more to hit, speed um, means we are um, we're faster, and agility means we can dodge more often, uh, so less damage that Bradford will take. Let's equip the upgrade. A uh, couple of new items, I love it and we can rank up everyone. Let's do that. So Bradford here. Um, now has, whoa, how do I rank him up? Rank up? Yes, maybe. Okay, we're, we probably can't rank him up here. And we got a new soldier. Another, oh, another Grenadier with a Shredder ability. Well, that's pretty good. I like it. So the SWAT, uh, squad now went up to five people. We had no idea who made the map in the first place. But if there really was some kind of hidden sanctuary out there, I wanted to see it for myself. The map was steering us right through town. But we figured maybe we'd creep through the cemetery instead to keep things quiet. Oh, the good old cemetery! I tried to take a few notes just in case we forged a new path. If history was going to be written by the victors, then I at least wanted to have something ready just in case we finally got our act together. Cool. So we, were we do have. But we managed to pick up another recruit near the cemetery. As risky as it was, we needed all the help we could get. And I wasn't worried about splitting the gear another way. Once we got close, the aliens were all over us pretty quick. What we found was difficult to face. Nice. I mean, we haven't leveled up. I think I somewhat um, messed that up. Um, I think we're ending the first video here. Right at the beginning of the second mission. That's a perfect cliffhanger. So let's go, baby. This is uh, going to be the second mission. And we're going to see each other in the next uh, episode, which is probably going to be tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Thank you for watching. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below.